Hi and welcome back to another video. What we're going to do today is take a look at turning a Raspberry Pi Pico into a Pico Flasher for the Xbox 360. If you don't already know what the Pico Flasher allows us to do is read the NANs on the 360 console allowing us to RGH it. There are other devices on the market for doing this, one of them being the NAND X. I've always found the NAND X to be okay. Um, if anything, now it's a little bit outdated, trying to sometimes get the software to work with newer versions of Windows. Hence why I would like to update it and start using the Pico Flash instead. You can still buy these um, NAND Xs. They are quite expensive um, in comparison to doing this setup. The Pi Picos, that unit itself, can be bought for a few pounds, three or four pounds, I think. There are a few other bits I'm going to be using, but these are completely optional. You can just use, you can just solder bare wire onto the terminals and use that. This is something I'm going to like to use quite a lot. So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is solder pin headers onto them. So I've picked up some of these. Again, this is completely optional. You won't need these if you don't want to do that. Go down that route. I've also got these male to female DuPont cables which I'm going to attach to the the pin headers and the other end I can use to attach to the soldering points on the Xbox 360 to read the NAND and something else we'll need is a USB cable for the for the Pico in order to put the correct file onto this so what we'll do first Like I said, the cables and pin headers, they're just optional. You can just use normal You can just use normal wire if you want to just do that if you've got that lying around. So your only expense will be So your only expense will be the the Pico itself. These are not expensive, they're only a couple of pounds and just to me it saves wear and tear on the device itself and it kinda makes it last a little bit longer for what I want to use it for. So what I'll do before we solder the pin headers on is we'll head over to the computer and I'll show you how to put the the flasher software on this. Before I go ahead and start soldering the pin headers onto it, I'd like to give a special shout out to our sponsors PCBWay. It's a perfect place to go, especially if you're into electronics and doing projects with Raspberry Pi stuff. There's loads of stuff over there, so let's head over and take a look at them. Huge congratulations to PCB Way, they're now celebrating their 11th year in the business. PCB is your one stop shop for all your electronic needs and so much more. If you have an idea and you'd like to turn that into reality, why not head over and try PCB Way's design service? It's as simple as sending them your design and they'll take care of the rest for you and they have a super fast turnaround. They offer a vast amount of services such as CNC and 3D printing. You can also check out the Shared Projects community where you can browse projects from other members of the community or even upload your own. As it's their 11th anniversary, don't forget to check out their promotions and competitions. All new members signing up to PCB will get a $5 coupon off their first order. Okay, now we're back. The pin headers I'm using are colour coded. The reason I've got that, I do plan on doing other things with this and it helps easily identify the pins on it. You could also just put black ones on if you wish and just look up the, what the pins do, but I'll put the diagram up on the screen just now. That'll show us what way these pin headers go. So, the red goes up towards the USB. So will just put them in place just now. So we'll just, just put them in place. This other side, that can go either way. So put that in place there. Now we'll go ahead and solder them on.
last of all we'll just do is tack the pins at each end just to hold it in place and then we can get the rest of them done. So it should look something like that. Now that's nicely in place, it's not going to go anywhere. Don't worry if you're not great at soldering, neither am I, but I do try. This shouldn't be too challenging, there's a good bit of space between them and they're, well not micro, so it shouldn't be too much, just need to be careful not to bridge any of the points, just, we just need to be careful not to bridge any of the points with solder. Just going to add a little bit more flux to these points. Just let just help the solder flow that little bit much better. So I just went right over that again to make sure there was no dry solder joints or any bridges on the soldering. Quite happy with that being quite a solid job so what we'll do now is head back over to the PC and we'll put the software onto it. Okay now we're over to the PC what we want to do is search for the Pico Flasher software on GitHub. So what you want to do is download the latest release of that and then we'll have the Pico Flasher file. So what we want to do after that is plug the the Pi Pico into the PC and um, while we're putting the cable in hold down the little white button that's on it and it should come up as a drive like this. So what you want to do now is drag and drop the Pico Flasher file into there. And 
And now the next bit of software you want to get hold of is JRunner. Again, you should find that on GitHub. Just download the latest version of that. The JRunner with the extras um, zip file. So now we have that. Start that up. That's OK, ignore that. And you should see there that now the Pi, Pico Pi is now recognised as a Pico Flasher. So now you're ready to use it for LGH in your Xbox 360. So hopefully this video has helped some of you guys out and thanks again for watching. I will in the future be doing an LGH in an Xbox 360 so keep an eye out for that as well and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you, bye bye.